welcome back to the channel. It's Celtic Link here. And in today's video, we're talking more Sand Day as we approach the eve of the Sand Day banner. In this video, we're going to go over the details for the Extreme Int Majin Vegeta, the Sand Day unit, as well as his banner unit, the Goten and Trunks Super Saiyan. And then we're going to go over, again, what I believe is going to be on the banner and discuss whether or not I think you should summon on this banner when it drops on the 17th at around 8 p.m. my time, Hawaii time, or about 11.30 PST. All right, anyways, let's dive right in. So on the screen here, uh, we have the Extreme Majin Vegeta. Stats are about, let's see, 13,000 HP, 10,000 attack, and about 7,500 defense. Not too terrible, and considering he's got guard and all this other stuff in his kit, you know, overall decent stats. He does lead Majin Buu Saga and Vegeta's family for key 3, 170% for HP, attack, and defense, so all of those stats are getting a 170 boost, plus... He adds an extra 30% for any character on the Gifted Warrior category, which pretty much includes all Vegetas and some Kid Trunkses, as well as a few others. Um, so all those stats are getting a total of a 200% boost. So let's start by looking at his passive skill. So passive Vegeta's Resolve, it activates an entrance amount animation once only and reduces the damage received by 30% for the rest of the battle when there is an ally who includes trunks on the team at the start of the character's attacking turn. So this is interesting. Um, when I kind of predicted what he was going to do, I imagine it would be a kid trunks, but I think it's really good that they decided to go with just trunks. All right, so it can be kid trunks, it can be super trunks, it can be um, teen Trunks or Teen Future Trunks, that's really good. So any one of those, which are all on Vegeta's family, will activate his passive. It doesn't have to specifically be a Kid Trunks. Although, you may want to run a Kid Trunks if only because most Kid Trunkses are on the Gifted Warriors category and they're getting that extra boost, right? So, the rest of the passive after the entrance animation. Uh, attack and defense about 180% plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% when performing super attack, plus an additional defense 50% with three or more key spheres obtained, and reduces damage received by 20% with six or more key spheres obtained. So it looks like they kept the damage reduction uh, similar to what the tech Majin Vegeta has, um, which is all right. Um, but even though it requires six key spheres, it's nice because when you read the last part of this passive here, he changes random key spheres to end type. So you're going to have an easier time getting the int orbs you need to activate his full passive. And he does get 88% um, with when he changes those key spheres. So that's kind of nice, although it, he does need to have 88% or less in order to do that. So all in all, really great unit a lot of buffs happening through a lot of different ways on this character he's going to be absolutely busted and one too far so let's talk about his active skill the active skill is the final explosion and it can be activated after he's received six or more attacks in the battle and when he when you perform the final explosion he performs a critical hit um, and he greatly raises attack for the turn and causes melee or colossal damage to all enemies and stuns them for the turn. So it's a guaranteed stun when you do it, and you lose 18% HP. Um, all in all, not a bad active skill. I kind of don't like the six attacks received. Um, it can happen in some short form events, DSBR and SBR, although. What I'm noticing with these 200% characters is you're probably going to kill them before you ever activate this anyways because these leader skills are just so powerful. Um, but nonetheless, if you somehow manage to take six attacks in the first turn with him, by the time he rolls back around turn three, you'll be able to fit, wipe up whatever's left um, with the final explosion. As far as links go, um, 
His links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Royal Lineage, Saiyan Pride, Over in a Flash, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. Uh, kind of bummed that he's got Supreme Power. Um, there aren't too many other Vegetas other than the other Majin Vegetas that have this. So you'll definitely want to make sure you link him, him with the other Majin Vegetas. Categories are Majin Buu Saga, Vegeta's Family, Gifted Warriors, Resurrected Warriors, Pure Saiyans, Worthy Rivals, Super Saiyan 2, and Corroded Body and Mind. Um, all decent categories for those struggling with that Corroded Body and Mind mission. He's definitely going to help out, especially when you consider that the Goku and the Legendary GT event is tech. This guy's going to wipe the floor with him. Um, he is missing a few categories. And you look over on the right here, it does mention that he's scheduled to be added with Final Trump Card. All out struggle and connected hope. So he'll help with uh, those categories as well. So good to see there. All right. So um, that's the Majin Vegeta. Really good. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention his super attack effect. His super attack effect does raise attack and defense for one turn while causing max damage. So pretty standard for super attack. But yeah, so like I said, it looks like this Vegeta is going to be working. Um, definitely try to get your hands on him if you can. But you know, we got to look at the rest of the banner to know whether or not it's worth your stones. Okay, so before we start looking at the banner, let's take a look here at the side banner unit, which I had originally predicted to be a Trunks and Bulma, but it turns out it's a Super Saiyan Trunks and Goten. Not that upset, but it's still a pretty good card, especially once we took a look at their details. So they do lead Gifted Warriors for 130%. So if you didn't pull the Fizz, Goten, and Trunks, you could always run these at a lower percentage. Um, and they do raise attack and defense for one turn. So just like the Vegeta, pretty standard effect. But here's where they get kind of crazy. And it almost puts them on par with the Dokkan Festival one. Okay. In their passive skill, pint Size duos choose strength. They gain an attack and defense 150% plus an additional 50% high chance of evading enemies attack as the first attacker in the turn. So this makes them a really, really good slot one unit. High chances, 70%. They're going to be dodging quite a bit. Um, better than the Fizz one, which the Fizz one kind of has to rely on natural dodge before he gets his active skill, which may not always work in your favor. He does have a high chance of launching an additional super attack as the second or third attacker in a turn. So if you do have to float him off, there's a good chance you're going to get, you know, maybe a second or third super in, depending on your hidden digital investment. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% with each attack performed up to 50%. Right? So if you get up to two more attacks, he's going to have 50% more defense after that. Plus, um, he gets an additional attack and defense with each attack evaded. So if he manages to start popping off that high chance to dodge, he's going to be hitting you know, up to 50% harder if you manage to land, miss five attacks, right? <clears throat> All right. He also gets key plus two and an additional attack and defense 50% when there's an ally who includes Vegeta on the team um, and medium chance of performing a critical hit if that ally is attacking in the same turn. So again, it says whose name includes Vegeta. So this could include the Int, Vegeta, and Goku that fuse into Vegeta, or the Vegeta and Goku that fuse into STR Vegito. Either one of those also activate that, right? Plus, any of the Majin Vegitos will work with that. Any card that includes Vegeta in the name is going to work to activate this. So, you know, if you do... If you manage to proc everything, you're getting 150, 200%, right? 50%, 250%, uh, 50%. So almost 300% attack and defense if you manage to activate everything in their passive. It's pretty good for a side banner unit. This guy, if played right, is going to be untouchable, right? So they are a very, very good unit. Okay. Super attack effect. Uh, is the same. Again, raises attack and defense and causes supreme damage. Pretty standard. Links are Innocence, Super Saiyan, Prodigies, Fighting Warrior, Saiyan Lineage, Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle. So they're going to link pretty well with the other Gotens and Trunkses. They all have pretty similar 
link sets. Um, I think the Go tens are probably closer to most of these though. Um, they would link well with the recently on JP EZA AGL Mighty Mask. Um, they would actually link pretty well with them, the, the LR, Go 10, and Trunks. So that could be an option. Uh, categories are Gifted Warriors, Hybrid Saiyans, Majin Buu Saga, Joint Forces, Youth, Super Saiyans, and Bond and Friendship. All right, so you're definitely going to be wanting to run these guys either on Gifted Warriors or Majin Buu Saga with the Vegeta, so that way they can get that 200% boost. Okay. So those are the two new characters being introduced on the Banneter. Honestly, them two alone, in my opinion, are worth summoning for. But that's when you got to start looking at the banner itself. So if we look at last year's Saiyan banner, we can get a kind of an idea of what this banner is going to look like. Um, so we know that the Int Broly is going to replace with the Int Vegeta, and the STR Trunks is going to be replaced with the STR Trunks and Goten. For sure... I am certain the blue boys are coming back on this banner. Um, the one in question that I'm not sure is coming back, but I have a pretty high feeling is, is the AJL Bardock. He was a Saiyan Day unit from years prior, so I do think he's going to be there, but they may swap him out for another Vegeta unit, like one, you know, maybe STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta could be something along those lines, or possibly even the Tech Majin Vegeta. Um, but as far as the rest of the for sure units on the banner that I'm that I'm calling right now, um, this Namek Goku most likely going to be replaced with the Fizz Super Saiyan Vegeta, the transforming one. Um, he was the original Pure Saiyan's leader before SDR Super Vegeta. Um, so I do think this guy is going to be on the banner just because this is going to be a very Vegeta centric banner. Um, I think the Kid Goku will probably be replaced with these guys, the Tech LR Goku Vegeta Angel that fuse into Super Gogeta. Um, I think this mostly because every year Saiyan Day Banner always brings back the Tanabata Thank You Celebration Banner unit. Uh, last year that was the Fizz Blue Boys here. This year going to be the Tech Gogeta. I do also believe this guy is going to be on the banner as well, um, probably replacing one of the other two, one of the Broly's here. Um, I believe he's going to be on the banner uh, simply because it was announced at the Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour that he's getting an EZA. His data is also found in the data download that happened earlier today with his EZA details. So definitely think he's going to be on the banner. Uh, I'm not going to go over his details for the EZA in this video. I'll save that for another video. Um, but I, I'm almost certain he's going to be on the banner. So it's kind of what I think the banner is going to look like, plus the Tech Majin Vegeta. So the question is, is it worth your stones? Right. Some of these guys are starting to show his age, show their age. Uh, most people summoning on this banner are probably going to have this unit finished rainbowed even and even if you don't you know it's not entirely worth your time to pick up um, at least not until he gets his easy a um, most people are going to have this guy he's an older unit if you're an older player you've probably got multiple copies of this guy 10 times over right the the units that could be worth your time though are this guy if you didn't pull on the thank you celebration or you got extremely unlucky definitely worth a pickup right Bardock definitely has aged out. If he's on it, um, definitely worth considering maybe holding off. But honestly, it's up to you. If you don't have him, then it works for you. Blue Boys, same. They're starting to show their age, although under these 200% leader skills, I believe they're on the Beyond Super Saiyan 200% leader skill, uh, which will be getting here in July on Global. JP's already got it. They're starting to look a little better, but you know, they're not they're not as good as they once were. Uh, they've kind of been pushed off the Rebels of Universe 17 for other more powerful units like the AGL UI Goku and the Int Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. So, you know, you really have to consider these units that are on here. But all in all, you know, I would say the banner is probably gonna be pretty decent. 
depending on your box. And really, when I when I'm going to tell people to summon or not summon, I'm going to base it on whether or not you like the character. And this is just my opinion. If you disagree with that opinion, you can leave me a comment down below and let me know. But this is just my opinion. If you like the character, summon for it. Um, I don't think saving all your stones to one point in the year just so you can get the one really good unit provides for good gameplay. That's just kind of my opinion. So if you like Majin Vegeta, and this is one of your favorite characters, this is your favorite moment from the anime, then go for it. Summon for it. Banner be damned, right? We've got months and months and months till the global anniversary. You've got time to build up your collection. So again, if you like the unit, go for it. Something to consider, though. Uh, Air Dokkan tweeted out uh, this image from the data download that on global, we are getting Dokkan Festival tickets from Majin Vegeta, which means if you're a paid player, you may consider picking up some of these tickets and save yourself some stones. You may get lucky, you may not, right? But if you're somebody who's a paid player or kind of, you know, a low spender, you might want to consider this, especially if the banner doesn't look all that enticing to you. So anyways, guys, you know, that's the video. Again, my recommendation is summon with your heart. If you like Majin Vegeta, then go for it. If not, hold off, pick him up with coins later down the road. Just consider that we may have another Broly situation on our hands where he may not come back until January on Global. That's another thing to consider. But anyways, guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give the video a like. Um, if you disagree with my recommendation for summoning not summoning let me know in the below let me know in the comments also if you are going to summon i'd love to see how many people actually intend to summon for majin vegeta i know i will be and i'll be going live when it happens if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel if you like the videos i'm putting out and you want to hear more thanks for watching guys and aloha